Hello everyone! I'm back with a really quick, fun tutorial today. Today for this fabric scrap project we're making a dinosaur baby bib. But I really like the look of the bandana style compared to a normal bib. So not only are they functional, but they are also pretty stylish. I have sketched out a pattern that you can find down below and print out yourself so you can follow along with this tutorial. Otherwise, you can pretty much kind of do the same thing using whatever bib that you have and just trace it out and then add a 3 8 inch seam allowance to the outline. So we're gonna go ahead and get started. When you print it out, you should have two pages and you're just going to line these up as best as you can and tape them together and then we can cut this out. If you're going to make more than one of these, then go ahead and print out two of these. Eventually I cut off that top portion, so it's just easier to have one that's going to have the top portion attached, as well as one with it cut off. And that'll save you a little bit of time. Next you're going to grab your scrap piece, and you want about an 18 or 19 inch by 14 or 15 inch rectangle. And we're going to fold this in half. You want to line up your short straight edge with the center fold. Cotton does shrink so you definitely want to pre-wash your fabrics before you use them. Especially knowing that you will wash these once they're done being that they are bibs and they will get dirty. Then we're going to cut this out so this will be your top piece. At this point is when you're going to cut off that little piece if you only printed out one. We're going to next grab our fleece. Same thing, you want to line up the short straight edge with the fold of the fabric. And cut this out as well. And this becomes your bottom piece. Take your top piece with your nice side face up and then you're going to lay your bottom piece on top lining up the edges and the round corners. And then we're going to go ahead and pin this together. When it comes to the middle you want to match up the edge of your top piece with the edge of your bottom piece. So you just gotta take your time and maneuver around the fabric a little bit and eventually it'll kind of fall into place. And then pin this down as well. So it should give you a little ruffled effect which will give a little more movement to that bandana look. We're going to sew around the edges of the entire thing, leaving about a 2 or 3 inch gap. We're going to sew this border with a 3 8 inch seam allowance. If you're a beginner, these tight curves might be a little difficult, so just take your time. You can always do small portions and then lift your presser foot and rotate the fabric while the needle is down. And then you can lower your presser foot and sew a little more and you can continue this all the way around the curve. And that might help a little more if you're still learning to sew. You can kind of see an example of what I mean when I get to the point here. You're going to go to where you want to stop, lift your presser foot, and then you're going to pivot the fabric to the direction that you want. Place your presser foot back down and you can continue sewing. So you should have something that looks like this. 
We're gonna make small little clips in all of the curves and what this is gonna do is help the fabric lay flat once we flip it inside out. So you're gonna do this around all the curves across the top And then at the bottom near the point, we're just gonna cut off some of this excess fabric a little bit, so that way we get a nice point as well. Go ahead and turn this inside out. I like to use a chopstick just to get out all those little corners and turns. Just be gentle, if you push too hard you might put a hole in your fabric, which I've done many times. So just take your time and do little tiny pushes till everything's popped out. Next we're going to do a top stitch around the edge. We're going to do this with a 1 16th inch seam allowance. Same thing, you really want to take your time. Make sure that the fabric edges are folded out as far as they go. And go ahead and take your time around those turns. When you get to the point, you're going to do the same thing you did the first time, where you're going to raise your presser foot, rotate your fabric, and then lower your presser foot again. Once you get to the end, just do a small back stitch so it doesn't come undone. And now we're going to add our snaps. So we're going to pick out four of the little points. And you should have two different kind of bottoms. There's one with a higher raised edge and one with a lower raised edge. So we want two of each. For the snap toolkit that I bought, it came with I think around 100 snaps. And it came with all the tools that I will ever need. If I can find the one that I got, I will leave it linked down below. We're going to mark where our snaps are going to go. So on the first side, I'm just going to eye the center and I'm going to mark about a fourth of an inch away from the top stitch that we made. And then I'm going to use my ruler and I want to make sure that my ruler edge is parallel to that top stitch that we made and we're going to mark about two inches out from the first mark that we made. Then I'm going to eye the first one on the other side. Same thing, about a fourth of an inch away from that top stitch. And then I'm going to line up that one with the second mark on the other side. I'm trying to get the right angle and then I can kind of pinpoint where that other mark is supposed to go from the top. Then just double check and make sure that they're two inches apart. And then we're going to grab this tool that came in the kit and it's got a sharp point edge and this is what's going to puncture the holes through our fabric for where our snaps are gonna go. Just be really careful because this is really sharp and I have poked myself before and it was not fun. So 
So we're going to start with one side, whichever side is fine, we're just going to stay on one side for now. You're going to take your little spike and we're going to go through the fabric so the fleece is in the back. And you're just going to push this through as best as you can. And then I'm going to start with the bottom snap that has the taller center. You're going to place that on top and then you're going to use your plier tool and you're just going to press it as hard as you can and then this is what's going to connect the snap. Go ahead and do this with the other one as well. Then on the other side, we're going to start with the fleece side going through to the fabric side. And this time we're using the shorter back snap. And you're gonna do the same thing with the pliers. You're gonna squeeze it really hard to make sure that they are connected. Take your time doing this and make sure that you're concentrating on which way you're putting your snap on because these things are really hard to take back off. Once they're on, they're pretty secure. And you are done. This is so quick. You can probably do this in about an hour or under. This is gonna make great gifts for baby showers. You can personalize it for boys or girls, however you want. They're great for catching drool. Fleece doesn't really absorb water, so it definitely does help that, as well as help keep the shape. Thank you so much for watching. I can't wait to do more of these scrap fabric projects in the future. I have a lot more projects planned and they will be posted for you soon. So please subscribe so you don't miss out. And I'll see you all in the next one. Bye!